Hi, we're Mandy and Lee, the frugal travellers, travelling the world on a budget. And today we are in Nicosia in uh, North Cyprus, the self-declared Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. And we are heading out to Famagusta, out on the east coast of the island. Also known as Gazimausa in Turkish. Yes, we're at the bus terminal here and now we're going to try and find a bus to get there. Seems to be a lot of buses packed up here and a little cabin over there. Maybe I can uh, buy a ticket from there. Oh, and we've got some music. A great way to start the day. Definitely Turkish style. We've just bought our tickets to Famagusta from MLS Bus Company. It's 120 lira one way. Good person. Excellent. Definitely a Turkish flavour to this place with all the music going on behind us. It's oh, great. Fantastic. Yeah. Now it's quarter past nine. We've just missed one bus. Oh, music stopped. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, and they're about every 45 minutes. So we've got to wait 45 minutes yeah. for the next one. We've bought our ticket. This is the bus that we're going to be getting on. It's a, a Dolmus, so like a mini bus kind of thing for this one and a one hour, 15 minute journey, we think. Um, it's, there's plenty of space there. It looks really good. Plenty of leg room, looks quite comfortable. And the good thing about being super early is that at least we get a choice of seats, <laughs> right, Mandy? Yes, and we've got to keep in mind, we checked with the lovely guy, the ticket seller, um, the last bus back is at 6.30 p.m. So it's vitally important. Yeah, we don't we... want to miss that, otherwise yeah. we're stuck in uh, Famagusta or night. have to pay like an expensive taxi back. So this shows that Cyprus is a country with a split personality. It depends on what side of the border you are to what the names are of places. We're in uh, Nicosia, here uh, they call it Lefkosia, and we're going to Famagusta, here they call it Gazimagusa, or I th we think it's pronounced Mausha, so we've heard. 9.46am and we're off. We've arrived at the Itamat bus terminal in Famagusta and just took one hour on the bus. Yeah, it was really cool. We went inside the MLS office, spoke with a really helpful guy and we bought our return ticket. Yeah, we also. were advised to buy them in advance uh, just in case. Uh, we didn't know when the last bus went and we asked and the last bus back uh, on a Friday is at 6.30 p.m. Yeah, so we thought about getting the 5.31 back but there's so much to see here in Famagusta and Barosha Yeah, so we wanted to have more time. So here we are, we are starting uh, near to the Ravelin Gate, is it Mandy? I think so, all the land gate and some, and some books, but also the Ravelin Bastion. So a little bit of information about Famagusta before we walk around. So as you can see behind us are the Venetian walls. Now these were built on top of the Licinian walls. Apparently, according to the very informative signpost back there, the Venetians spent 50 years strengthening them from 1495 in order to repel the Ottomans. Yeah. It didn't work. In 1570, after, 10, after a 10 month siege, the Ottomans like, broke through and they took the city. Yeah, yeah, but it's been inhabited since ancient times and I think it's been the most important port in the whole island of Cyprus. The most important city apparently with like yeah. beautiful cathedrals inside, churches. It's got a rich heritage, the yes. uh, Knights Templar have uh, left their mark here. Leon and... Leonardo da Vinci came here in I think 1451. Apparently it was said that there were as many churches inside these city walls as there are days of the year. Sounds right. exciting. Yeah. Let's go and see. Now the moat was filled with water to repel the Ottomans, but today there's a lovely walkway around these ancient city walls. Quick rundown of the old city. Well, we've got a map here. We are at the uh, Ravelin Bastion and we're going to walk up to St. Peter and Paul's Church, St. Nicholas Cathedral, which is really important, St. George of the Latins, and finish at Othello Castle looking over Ham Famagusta Harbour. Let's go up to the top of the bastion here to get a view from above. And this is quite impressive. We can see how the walls surround the city here. Fortifications here are incredible, it's just so detailed. Heading down the pedestrian zone now into the centre of the old city. Mm. 
shape. So this is the Sinan Pasha Mosque, formerly the Church of St. Peter and Paul, built in the mid 14th century. Now it was one of the few larger buildings to not be destroyed during the Ottoman bombardment in 1570. Apparently it's undergone a number of reincarnations, including a mosque under the Ottomans, but under the British it was used as a wheat storehouse. So this is the remains of the former Venetian royal palace. And it's now a car park, which is a, quite a sad end to a palace, but it's amazing how these ruins still stand after, what, almost 500 years? And this is the front of the Venetian palace, a little bit more ornate. It's got a coat of arms above the door there. And the jewel in the crown of Famagusta is the Church of St. Nicholas. Look at this incredible building now turned into a mosque as we can hear now this is the finest example of Lucinian gothic architecture on the entire island of Cyprus so the detail in this gothic cathedral is incredible it was uh, built by the Lusignans, I think, in 1298 to 1312. When the Ottomans invaded, they destroyed a lot of it and rebuilt it as a mosque. Now it is the Lala Mustafa Pasha Sami, Lala Mustafa Pasha Mosque. Prayers just finished, so we may be able to go in soon. In case you didn't know who the Lusignans are, they were the French nobles that bought Cyprus from Richard the Lionheart in 1198 AD. And this is all that remains of the Gothic Church of St George of the Latins. So this is St George of the Latins Church and it's a wreck now and you can just walk in to this ruins. What once would have been a fine Old church, use your imagination. Wow. It's just an open door and an empty room. No one around here. Something you may not expect to see here in the north of Cyprus is a bust of William Shakespeare. Now behind him is Othello's Tower, named after a lion and the play Othello, which refers to a seaport in Cyprus and a castle. So now we're heading into Othello Tower, built around the 14th century. You can see the Lion of Venice still over the door. Now the entry for this was paid for by Joan Coletti from your Buy Me A Coffee Money. Thank you so much. It was 50 Turkish Lira each. We're looking forward to going inside and exploring. Here in these places, the light coming through. Wow. It's amazing to think that this was a stronghold built to keep out invaders, yet when the Ottomans came in 1570, they managed to destroy it and defeat their opponents. And this is what's left. Now the reason why I've come to Famagusta, a big reason, is that it's got a very close uh, family tie to me. My uncle served here in the British military in 1959. He was a conscript, it was um, after the war, everybody had to do their service. And he was sent to Cyprus in 59, was the last year of the British colony here. They got independence in 1960. So he served here at Famagusta port and uh, down there was where he was based. He has dementia now. Um, he's in a home and he doesn't remember 
what happened yesterday, but he remembers Cyprus in a very vivid way. And it's incredible to hear his stories. So I've come here to take some pictures of where he used to be based and to send a postcard to him to hopefully jog those memories for him. And um, I think he'll appreciate that. Heading through the sea gate now and round to Famagusta port. Got this mural outside the wall of the port of the invasion, the Ottoman invasion in 1571. You can see them breaching the walls there. It's pretty cool. Magusa, 1571. able to go into the port proper because it is coast guard military and commercial uh, but we can go into the fishing part next to it the building behind me was 1935 where my uncle will have had his mess hall so it's really nice to see around here come down to the suburb of Varosha. This used to be a really extravagant seaside resort where the rich and wealthy from all over Europe and America came to play in the 50s and the 60s. The likes of Richard Burton, Sophia Loren, uh, Elizabeth Taylor and many more came here for their holidays. It was a booming tourist place but then 1974 the Turkish invasion of Cyprus put an end to all that. People had to flee their homes. Everywhere was abandoned, the whole suburb was, and it was locked down and turned into a ghost city. Now, it's been like this for 50 years. Buildings crumbling, uh, the nature coming back in the streets, etc. It's a little bit like Pripyat in Chernobyl. One of these places where time has stood still for 50 years. It's recently opened in the last couple of years and now you can go in and walk around before it was a military zone you couldn't come near the place now they've cordoned off the buildings so you can enter the buildings because they're all falling down and they're in a bad way but it's interesting to wander around and see what it was like in this city time stood still for 50 years and what it's like when you don't touch a place for 50 years and how nature takes control. Now, if you don't fancy walking the many kilometers around Varosha, you can come here right at the very entrance and you can hire bicycles, scooters, and there's even tours in electric cars. It's 500 Turkish lira for a scooter for two hours and a bicycle is 100 Turkish lira for four hours. See, this was once an optician's signs are falling down all the windows are broken not much left of these buildings got buildings that were half constructed and left and buildings that did exist and were left attention the building may collapse it is dangerous to enter inside the building and approach it so they are cordoned off these buildings so nobody gets injured say that it could be quite dangerous with so much broken glass and everything gone. Come around to the Palm Beach. Now this used to be out of bounds, but now tourists can come here, the ones that are coming into Verosha. The water looks beautiful. You can see the vast uh, line of hotels that are all derelict now. That's so sad. Just past there, there is a fence up, so you cannot go any further than that. The military will stop you. But at least we can come here and have a swim. And there's even like this open cafe, beach bar kind of place. You can sit down, have a drink. Soak up the atmosphere. Well, I've come down to have a little paddle in the water here because it's so beautiful, the water quality. Look at this, clear as anything, lovely and blue. Wow, you can see why it was so popular. Good enough for the likes of Sophia Loren. And Richard Burton, it's certainly good enough for me. So nice. It's so sad that something this incredible has just gone to rack and ruin due, due to war and invasion. So many people had to flee their homes and leave. The Greeks, Cypriots, 
had to leave this side and go to the other side and a lot of Turkish came to this side so there was a mass migration in both directions and this has been left to rack and ruin it could have been such an amazing place and maybe one day in the future it will who knows up ahead is a new Smoky Joe's restaurant and you can see to the right the crane like you know building a new hotel block I'm assuming no way we'd be standing underneath those weights have been there for over 50 years this looks like it's definitely about to collapse it's leaning to one side the concrete is rotten all the way through now, this was a Toyota dealership here and there would have been cars in the showroom windows and now there's just lots and lots of rubble so all tourist resorts have their handicrafts and their souvenirs because it's a playground of the rich and famous they also sold furs here as well and so here we have the ruins of the Edelweiss cafe I'm sure this was once a very popular place to go with the farm of Gusta Tavern Opposite. It's a cruel irony indeed. The curiosity shop here in Varosha has now become a curiosity itself. Barclays Bank were once here. And on this junction we have the large Toyota dealership. So the question is, what is it that interests us about this kind of thing, this post-apocalyptic world, you know, where everything's broken and the place has fallen to pieces? Everybody's so interested. There's tourists everywhere, people filming and being voyeurs. I mean, I'm one of them, so I can't criticize, but I'm just interested. What do you think? What do you think about all this? It's just so bizarre. So just like Pripyat, there's like, you know, lovely friendly dog. Just wants a snack and luckily we had some crackers left over. It's beautiful, such a beautiful dog. Oh, little waggy tail. Coming through a gate here with barbed wire on it, so maybe into a different zone, not too sure. Well, a lot of the streets in Varosha have been open, so you can come in and have a look around. There are still many sections, such as this, that have been walled off. And all we can do is look over here. And of course, we've still got our buddy. He's with us. So we're now going to head back the way we came and go down John F. Kennedy Avenue. It's just so sad really, I think the thing that I take from this is it's, uh, the victims of war are always the innocent people, you know, who uh, so many people lost their properties here and had to flee um, and this is the result of it, you know, hopefully just one day something will change and people can go back to their normal lives. It is forbidden and dangerous to enter this area for civilians. Checkpoint. Asterius Hotel looked like it would have been pretty nice back in the day. It's just like a really eerie sense like walking around here to think that this is like you know the Gold Coast in Australia or Ibiza. This was a place where people came to like enjoy the sun, to enjoy the beautiful sea and due to politics and strife and war, this place has been empty for 50 years and the buildings have fallen into rack and ruin and we're, we're allowed to come in now to see it but you know we weren't for so long. It's just, I don't know, it's just really poignant, quite, quite disturbing really. We think this is the end of the road as far as we can go on JFK, there's a walkway down to a viewpoint down by the beach, let's have a look at that. And people do come down here for a day at the beach. This was closed off for such a long time. And now people can enjoy this beautiful beach here because the sand is lovely and the water looks incredible. 
So we're now back at Famagusta bus station and it's time to end this video. Yeah, we tried so hard to film an outro outside, but it's just too windy, so we've had to come back here. Yeah, it has been an absolutely epic day here in Cyprus. Yes, it's been quite emotional. Really. Well, truly, yeah. And also seeing like Varosha, the ghost town, and just think of what could have been and yeah, Camo Vista was incredible. And on our next trip, we are heading off to Gurney. Yep, also known as Kyrenia. So if you enjoyed this video or if you found it interesting, helpful and informative, please comment and share it with your friends. Yep, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.